is that? That's Peppa? That's Peppa? She's a pig? I'm thinking it's a pretty good day to do another crossover video where I don't want to just talk about hair loss. I also want to talk about DNA and ethnicity because as you know, as a subscriber to this channel where I mainly, well, really exclusively talk about hair loss at this point, I talk about one of my theories is the more Asian you are, the less likely you are to experience male pattern baldness earlier in life, but you're also less likely to go to full beard by the time you're 18. But if you're Asian, you're more likely to experience diffuse thinning. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, the more Scandinavian and especially British you are, the more likely you are to go bald sooner via male pattern baldness, but also the more likely you are to grow a beard sooner than later. Okay? So there's that spectrum, right? Well, what about my DNA? You know, now on my other channel, I talk about it all this time, but on this channel, maybe for the first time, I'm really gonna break this down and tell you what my DNA is. So I used MyHeritage because they're the cheapest. I think right now they're like $59 and it only takes a month to get your results back. So that's who I went through. MyHeritage, in case you don't know, oh, right now in this moment, try to guess. Wait, what, what is my ethnicity? Any idea? All right. Here we go. We're gonna talk about what my ethnicity is now, okay? You wanna help? What does it say? Can't read yet? Okay. I am 77.6% European. When you specifically break down the European part of me, I'm 37.4% North and Western European, which is like German, Belgium, French. Um, mostly that's gonna be German because my last name is Shell, and, and we, you know, that's our history. We go back to Germany on that side. Uh, I'm also 31.8% uh, of, of South Europe, Iberian, which basically means Spanish and Portuguese, but mainly that's gonna be Spanish because my mom's Mexican. Uh, next, I'm 8.4% Eastern European. Uh, of that, 6.1% is generically Eastern European, which is probably something like Polish or something. But then also I'm 2.3% Balkan, which is like, uh, it's kind of like a mix between like Turkish uh, Mediterranean and Slavic is kind of that mix. That's what kind of Balkan basically is. Kind of like Romanian, Macedonian, kind of Bulgarian, that sort of thing. All right, next up, leaving Europe. Now I'm 21.6% uh, Native American, but not in the way you're thinking, not like Choctaw and Cherokee and all that. Go south, go down to Mexico, go down to where Mayans and Aztecs were that kind of Native American. Yeah, the ones that built those weird like square pyramids and yeah, Mayan and Aztec. Like Indiana Jones Temple of Doom kind of stuff. Okay, that, that is 21.6% of my DNA because again, my mom's Mexican, half Mexican. All right, and then lastly, I'm 0.8% Middle Eastern, just generically Middle Eastern. They're not sure exactly what. My guess is it's probably either Turkish or Lebanese. Something like that would be my guess. Because ultimately, my mom is supposed to be half Italian. And anyway, my great grandparents came from Italy, speaking only Italian. They had completely Italian names. But through my mom's DNA test, her, and her shows up some stuff that mine doesn't. My mom is like 15.2% Sephardic Jewish, which is like basically kind of a Spanish Jew. And then the other half, uh, uh, on her dad's side being Middle Eastern and it doesn't really distinguish what part. So that's how Italy was back, you know, that's kind of the history of Italy. If you come from Italy and you take a DNA test, it's, even if you think you're 100% Italian, you're gonna probably show up to be a lot of other things too, especially Jewish. And that's something I talk about on my other channel, Family Friendly Daddy blog, the, the YouTube channel. But I think it's important to break this down because, you know, now let's think back to my theories. I always say you're less likely to go bald sooner if you, uh, if you are Asian. But what's funny is, so at almost age 37, I still have most of my hair. I'm still not quite Norwood 3 yet, but I do have some diffuse thinning. I'm just saying, I'm just asking, but what if the fact that I still have the hair that I still have, but I still have, but I do have some diffuse thinning, Asian, what if we're kind of seeing a little bit of all of that in my DNA? Now, I understand. I'm not saying that's definitely the case. I'm saying it's possible. Let me take off my hat. All right. So to be, you know, I would never have thought I'd still have this much hair at age almost 37. 
you know, and I do have some diffuse thinning. And actually, it looks even worse in this video because I put in my rosemary oil last yeah. night. Are you a homegirl? Yeah. You're homegirl? Oh, yeah. homegirl slice. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I wonder if we, if part of my diffuse thinning yeah. could, and could we call it diffuse thinning even? I just wonder though, when we look at the DNA, how I serve as a human guinea pig to back up my own theories. Okay, because again, I mean, you're looking at a, a, guy, at a guy here who is basically three quarters European and half of that is Spanish. And then the rest of me mostly is going to be like Mayan Aztec, you know, Native American uh, in, in Mexico, like Southern Mexico, Michoacan, I think is how you say it. That's where my great grandparents moved from. So what do you think about this? I think it's a pretty interesting concept that you can look at a man who's not fully European, who's, who's a decent part distant Asian, because that's how I see Native Americans. They came you know, from Asia a long time ago, but I still think that ultimately it's, it's the same basic DNA uh, as far as that goes. What are your thoughts on that? Feel free to disagree, but, and I'm not saying this is definitely the way it is, but I'm thinking, I love just exploring these theories. And I know I talk a lot about the, the ability to grow a beard and uh, you know the hairline at age one. But I think I wanted to dedicate a video just to talk about the DNA aspect of it. Uh, and, to, and to know that the host of this channel is not fully European. He's over, you know, well nearly a quarter Native American really is the way my DNA shows up. Keep in mind when you take a DNA test, it's not an exact science, and you adopt half of your DNA from each parent. So for example, my mom's 15.2% Jewish, I'm 0% Jewish, I didn't get any of that DNA, but my sister did. My sister also got some Italian DNA, I got 0% Italian. Uh, so it just depends on uh, how much, what part, out of the half you get from each parent, what half of the mix you're gonna get. So it's not an exact science, and that's part of the reason why my other channel is so interesting, Family Friendly Daddy Blog, because we talk about all that. That I even do a video with my, my sister, we share our DNA test results, and you see, they're so different. And that's my number one video on that channel, because people are, people are kind of ignorant, and they're like, oh, are you sure you get the same parents? Oh, what about the milkman? All those stupid comments. They don't realize that you get half of your DNA from each parent, so brother and sister, brother and brother are gonna have different DNA. And even my, both my parents have done the test and yet their results are, it's not like you just cut theirs in half and then add them together and that's me. Their results are considerably different than mine because I understand you get half your DNA from one parent, half from the other, but, that, but what, how much of each half, you don't know. So unless you have an identical sibling then you're not gonna have results that are gonna really match that well. And that's part of why it's so fascinating. It's a mixed bag, you don't know what you're going to get. So on my other channel, Family Friendly Daddy Blog, which I need a thousand subscribers for by February 20th, or they pull the plug and don't let me make money anymore from it. So I'd appreciate it if anyone thought that was interesting wanted to subscribe. So that's what I talk about on the other channel. Can I, oh, I get to have my hat back. Thank you. What about Peppa? Oh, Peppa's still, I'm holding Peppa. All right, what do you think about that? I think this is relevant. I think it's very important to explore DNA to get a good glimpse of whether you're gonna go bald and how soon and all that. If you haven't taken a DNA test, I suggest that you do it. And I definitely Daddy, suggest Daddy, my heritage just because Daddy, of the cheapest. Daddy, and my sister went through a different company, 23andMe, which is good, but I feel that overall the results were just as good by going through my heritage. I'm Nick Shell, and all I ever talk about is hair loss, except on my other channel, I mainly talk about DNA test results, because now that you've watched a nine minute video on it, you're like, actually, this is actually pretty interesting, and it's not just about hair loss. So Nick has another channel about this, Family Friendly Daddy Blog, and he talks about this all of it. So he can be interesting talking about other things. I never thought about that.